So last year this movie came out, Batman vs. Superman. You may have seen it, you may have liked it, you may have hated it, the critics all hated it. This is a screen grab from the site Rotten Tomatoes, which is a kind of a conglomerate of all the movie critics, and they did not like it. They gave it a 27% out of 100, which is considered a splat. So they hated this movie, and a lot of other people hated this movie. For some reason, when I went to this movie, I had a very different reaction than most people did. My, my response was very different. And in fact, I had kind of a deep reaction to it. So I decided to do something I'd never done before. I decided to make a video of me talking about the film. Now, what was interesting was that this, this little video that I put out, on some level kind of went viral. Within the first three days, it had about 100,000 views across YouTube and Facebook and all the different platforms, and it just kept rising. The film, this little video got picked up by several movie sites. It was tweeted by several people who were actually in the film which was really interesting to me because it broke every single rule of good video for the internet. First of all, I had no reputation for doing this. Second, the video is like 18 minutes long, which on YouTube is like an eternity. That's like an ant walking around the earth in YouTube time, right? Now, this, is, this whole video is just me talking to the camera for 18 minutes. There's no second angles, there's no shots from the film, there's no music, there's no graphics, it's just me talking for 18 minutes. Now you've been listening to me talk for about 25, 30 minutes now. You know how painful that is. <laughs> On the internet, that's multiplied. So why, how would a video that broke all these rules, 18 minutes long, be so embraced and go so viral? I'm going to give you my theory about what happened. But to show, I'm going to show you a clip from it, but to show it to you, I've got to give you a little bit of a lead-in. And to give you a little bit of a lead-in, I've got to give you some spoilers about the movie Batman vs. Superman. But I feel no guilt about that. The movie's been out for like a year and a half or whatever, and if you haven't seen it at this point, shame on you. So, there's this, so everybody's talking about Batman vs. Superman, and a lot of people were asking themselves from the beginning, why are we making a movie about these two guys fighting? Why can't they be friends? But they did. That's what they decided to do. And then the next question is, okay, they're going to fight. How are they going to resolve the fight? Like, what's going to end the fight? Is one of them going to win? Or are they going to quit for some reason? Well, the filmmaker's answer to that question was to decide that the way they were going to resolve the fight was that Batman was going to realize that these two guys, their mothers have the same name. Both of their mothers are named Martha. And when Batman realizes that both of their mothers are named Martha, Martha, he decides to stop fighting. There's a lot of people who think that is the stupidest thing they have ever heard in their life. But I had a very different reaction, and here's what it was. And I think, for me, the profound moment of that in the movie was knowing that about all of us. Um, there are so many differences between us. There are so many reasons that we can fight and we get caught up in the details of life that make us want to fight each other and battle each other. And we make a big deal about the battles and, and make them out like they're so important and that the decisions and the finales about who wins and who loses matter so much. But the truth is, the reality is that you and I, our mothers have the same Our mothers have the same name. Our mothers have the same name, you and I. So when we were done filming, it's an 18 minute straight shot, no cuts. My cinematographer looked at me at the end and said, we're gonna cut that part where you cry, right? And I said, no, no, that's going in. YouTube, my, my 15 year old tells me that if YouTube could have another tagline, it would be don't read the comments. The comments on, because the comments are terrible on YouTube if you have no experience, they're ridiculous. But on this video, the comments are glorious. My favorite one, I haven't read them all, there's over 2,000 of them. My favorite one is one that says, I hated this movie, but I love this video. I have never seen a movie reviewer cry. This guy should review every movie. 
But there was something very interesting about that to me. He hated the movie, but he liked my video. And, he, and I looked him up, and he shared it on all his social media feeds for a movie he hated and said, you got to watch this video. And it made me realize something about the power of authenticity, of vulnerability, of openness, particularly in the face of a film that was being so reviled and hated. Everybody hated this movie, and yet they loved my review of it. And it taught me the power of keeping my heart open. It's hard to keep your heart open. Life's hard. Life's tough. You got people every day that are making life difficult for you. And what you want to do is shut down. But to do something extraordinary, you've got to have the strength to do the opposite and stay open. We sometimes talk about in business not making emotional decisions or not leading with your feelings. I agree with that, and that's true. But that doesn't mean there's not a place for humanity and openness and, in being, and being in touch with your emotions and having a very high emotional IQ to go with your mental IQ. I'm standing out here with you guys today, and there is one version of reality that I could say, as a sensitive artistic person, I'm talking to a bunch of strangers. I don't know these people. I don't have a relationship with these people. You don't have a relationship with me. As a sensitive artist, that makes me a little nervous. But I don't walk out here with that version of reality in my mind. The version of reality I have in my mind is that you and I, our mothers have the same name. And because I know that, I can walk out here with great openness and show you a video of me crying and feel okay with that because I'm safe with you here because we're brothers and sisters and our mothers have the same name. That kind of openness, people know it. They feel it. And safety is incredibly important in community building. We're overwhelmed by commercials that are trying to manipulate and control us and we now can tell the difference between authentic and real communication that is human and manipulation. And when you can make people feel that you're a real person with an open heart, with authentic emotions, and you care about them and you're connecting with them, they open up too. And they want to connect with you and help you in unique ways.